in Jesus name we pray amen so welcome once again to this Jesus seminar 2021 it's a way of um, discussing the scriptures is a way of uh, identifying what the Lord wants us to know about him and particularly we call it Jesus seminar because it's the Holy Week and uh, we are remembering what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago on the cross. So some of the questions we are going to try to decipher is, who is Jesus? Why did he come? And why did he choose to die? Not only for, for us, but for the world. What was the reason behind that death? Of course, we know is the ultimate sacrifice, but how does that relate to me? And then once I understand what impact it has in my own life, then I'll be able to know what God expects of me so that to propagate this gospel of the kingdom so that other people can be aware of it. And of course, there'll be questions and answers. So let's just get to know Jesus. Let's get to know Jesus. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1, we know it says that in the beginning, it said God created the heavens and the earth. And then it said the earth was without form, verse 2, and darkness was on the face of the deep. When you say the deep, that means dark, deep represents waters. So that means that uh, the earth was a large mass of waters. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So the mission of God here was critical in the sense that what he created, something happened to it, to the fact that after that something that happened to it, we are told that the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. So this is a critical mission to bring about normality. Verse 3, Then God said, Let there be light. So, and there was light. So a solution was put in place to address the problem. The mission was so critical that God has to step in into, into the world to save the world. In John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus now reiterated what has happened because he says, I am the light of the world. He said, anyone that follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall receive the light of of the light of life so Jesus therefore is the light of the world that God sent him to as the solution to the problem of the world for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 16. So you can see that Jesus is the Son of God because the scripture made us understand that not only is he the light of the world, God sent him, sent his Son to the world to save the world. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn 
the world. That word condemn is a legal term, which means sentenced to death. So God did not send his son to the world to sentence us to death. See, so Jesus came to our rescue. So death is therefore the sentence as a result of sin. Verse 19 tells us that a man loved darkness rather than light. And why is that? It says because their deeds were evil. So Jesus' mission was clear here in the sense that there was a problem, darkness upon the face of the deep. Wherever you see darkness, there is absence of light, there is evil, there is all sorts of evil there. Wherever you see darkness, it also represents the absence of not only of light but of knowledge. So someone that is ignorant, he says, is in the dark. So Jesus now came as a panacea to the problem. And his mission, therefore, was clear from the word go. So, for us, therefore, it is not enough to say, I believe in God, but it's also necessary to make sure that your life depends on God. So, it's not just saying, I'm a believer, but make sure your life depends on God himself. And then you'll be able to now see the role of God in helping you to put things that have been touched in your life to put them right. So Jesus was sent by God and Jesus is the Son of God. Even his birth, the birth of Jesus was prophetic because prophet Isaiah said in chapter 9 of the other book of Isaiah, verse 6, for unto us a child is born. See? Unto us a son is given. Somebody's son was given. So that that son was born by a man. Or this time a woman. So what we are saying therefore is prophet Isaiah of already said earlier on earlier before jesus came to the scene that the son of god will be born by a woman and he goes on to say and the government shall be upon his shoulder so this son of god that will be born has responsibility upon his shoulder he is to govern he came with a government. He came to rule and to govern. And a little while we'll look at who does he come to govern or who can be governed by him. He goes to say, and his name, say talking about Jesus, the Son of God, and his name will be called Wonderful. He didn't say his names are. It's just his name will be called Wonderful. And he goes on. So this is a very uh, uh, strong way of uh, identifying who Jesus is. You know, he, he, he said his name will be called Wonderful. And I wonder why his name, he said it shall be called Wonderful. And he began to list them. And he did not say his names shall be called. I leave that one for the English uh, 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 English expert to help us to clarify that. So his name will be called, and began to list the names. Wonderful. See, wonderful, because his government is full of wonders. You know, and that's where you and I comes in. It's full of mighty works. Say so his name will be called wonderful will be called counselor the one that gives counsel mighty god so he himself is god 
but mighty, mighty God, Prince of Peace. So therefore, when it says wonderful, means full of wonders. When it says counselor, both his name and his function gives counsel. Where the word of a king is, there is power. If you go by his counsel, if you know, go by his counsel, then you will know how. You will know how things will end because his counsel always ends well. Mighty God, because he is mighty in strength. His strength is unlimited. This is talking about Jesus. That's why everyone that prays in his name ends well, full of might. And it says, Everlasting Father. You no, know, is also the Father. Everlasting Father. The Father that does not fade away. Everlasting. Ever sure and ever present. And it says, Prince of Peace. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, do I give. So he is the prince of peace. His name and his function is, is a peace giver. So if you are troubled, if you are worried, you need to ask him to give you peace of mind. He is a peace giver. So, and this, are ve this is very important to know his background, to know what he came for, to know why he was sent, to know who he is, so that he can, he can inform the way we relate to him, if we know him. Even his mother became pregnant when she was a virgin. So there are wonders that surrounded his birth as well. Who would have thought that a virgin without a man can become pregnant just like that? But that is why his birth is very, very uh, significant. Hear what she said when she knew that she was going to become a mother without a husband. She was going to be pregnant. When the angel Gabriel broke that news to, 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 to her in Luke chapter 1, verse 34, he said, How can this be? How can this be since I do not know a man? Then hear the response from the angel in verse 35. The angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God Almighty. Because God is tripartite. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not three different gods. One God. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. So we know Jesus as the Son of God. That God gave his only begotten Son to be born by Virgin Mary. So we see therefore that God performed, his birth came through wonders because Mary never uh, knew a man before she got pregnant of Jesus. So that tells us that God can do what has never been done before in the history of man. And that's what he did. So the birth of Jesus was necessary to accomplish the purpose, the purpose to which uh, God sent him to save the world because the, the, the scripture made us understand that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God 
So the stage that's Roman three twenty three situation was so bad that God Himself had to step in by sending His Son. So His mission was not only uh, uh, critical. So was His birth. His birth was mighty. His birth was mighty, full of power that has never been done before. Even at His birth. The, the, while the shepherds were watching their flocks by night, you know, the angels came there to give them the, the good news. And uh, they now, out of that uh, uh, excitement, followed the stars to where Jesus was lying in the manger. In Luke chapter 2, verse 17. Now when they had seen him, the shepherd, the shepherds, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Where were they told? We are told they were told in verse ten. Bible says then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy next verse for there is born to you this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord so you will see also from the pages of the Bible they refer to Jesus with different uh, adjectives to to not only mention describe his name but also describe his ability or his function so they call him Savior, Savior of the world, who is Christ the Lord. Verse 19, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, the things that were said about this newborn child of hers. Jesus came to fulfill a a, a, a critical mission and this is necessary and that is what made him to be called the Savior and so we address him as Jesus the Savior Jesus the Savior now now we know who he is and why he came he came to save us number one to save the world from sin the power of sin sin has a grip in the lives of people that god have to send his son to break that grip which we'll soon find out how he did that act chapter 4 verse 12 tells us act 4 12 12 tells us that nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So that made Jesus to become our Savior. Not only us, but the Savior of the world. Number two, not only did he come to save, now that we are looking at why he came, he came to give us life. The Zoe life of God. Zoe is that Greek word that defines the life, eternal life. So he came to give us life, the life of God. Romans 6.23 makes us understand that for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The effect of sin in the lives of anyone that commits sin is death. And that death says, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we see death as the result of sin, you see, and but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is eternal life? The life of God is eternal. Eternal means something that has no 
ending. Eternal life is the life that will make us to be with God forever. And this is only available as a gift from God in Christ Jesus. So that's the second reason why he came. The third one is that he came to teach us how to live in this world. Without him, that's why he, he came to be born through the virgin woman so that he too can experience what you and I are expressing today. You see, he came to teach us how to live in this world. So whatever you go through, know that Jesus has already set the pace for you. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 12 tells us, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. What is the grace? What is the grace of God? Jesus Christ is the grace of God that brought salvation. Grace is therefore God's, God's riches at Christ's expense. Each of the letters there, you know, represents what I've just said. God's riches at Christ's expense. See, Jesus Christ is therefore that grace that God sent to save you and I. Verse 12 says, Grace teaching us that, so you can see, God gives grace to teach us. God gave Jesus to teach us about him. He says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness is the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness. So if somebody says you should tell a lie, you've been taught. Grace will remind you, you should not tell a lie. See? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Worldly lust. No, the opposite of love is hate. The opposite of love is lust. You know, godly lust. What, pardon me, worldly lust. We should live soberly. So you can see grace teaching us to deny ungodliness and lust in the world. That when we do that then we should be able to live soberly, you know, righteously and godly in the present age. So it's, that's where Jesus comes in. Through his lifestyle, we can learn how to live godly. We can learn how to live soberly. We can learn how to live righteously. In this world through the grace of God so whatever we are going through let's learn how to respond to it through the life of Jesus so Jesus came as the grace of God to teach us how to live in this world why did he why did he come number four to rule his government, remember what Prophet Isaiah said, his government shall be upon his shoulder to rule, to rule over evil and the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 tells us the second part of that verse. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he will destroy, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
the works of the devil can only be destroyed through Christ and Jesus Christ has destroyed the works of the devil so you and I if we are in Christ Jesus should not be afraid of evil nor should be afraid of the works of the devil because they have been destroyed through Jesus and that is why the relationship with Jesus is key to living a victorious life for this purpose was the Son of God manifested so this was his mission his mission so critical that he has to come Jesus he came for this purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil and that is why you and I must not be afraid of what is called evil nor the works of the devil because you are in Christ therefore if anyone is in Christ that's what Paul said if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new 1 Cor 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 so you and I are in Christ and anyone that is in Christ remember the grace has come to teach us how to live will know that I should stop lying telling lies or pretending to be who I am not you know that is the grace of God to us towards us so all things have passed away old things the way I used to live before coming to God you know what I used to do before coming to God you know those things I'm ashamed of that I cannot even t tell anyone about now that you are in Christ they are what old you don't go back they are old all things have passed away they are gone behold all things are become new that's why new what are the new things the new things that are now in Christ as I begin to follow him so that's why he told Peter and Andrew his brother Matthew 4 he says to them follow me from verses 18 to 22 follow me and I shall make you fishers of men and down the line he also met James and John the sons of Zebedee he said the same thing to them so there will be one day that you and I met Jesus and we began to follow him I remember my own do you remember the day you met the Lord and you began to follow him and from that time to now to today how has it been with you of course there will be bombs on the road yes is expected but every time you meet the bombs on the road who do you go to to who do you go back to God to begin to help you to walk your way th through it again and see where it has taken you even today you know so these are the new things the things that have become new in our lives you know you used maybe you used to be hostile to people you know the way you used to relate to people but now because of your persistence and your we have been following Jesus for some time you know that those things are not good so you are now you are now experiencing the new things new ways of life because you have been following him that is applicable for everyone that are in Christ Jesus because you are in Christ Jesus and that's what informs our behavior the way we relate to people what we say to people where we go the kind of friends who we will we, 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 we party with you know because we don't want anyone to drag you back to the old ways of life so Jesus began 
his ministry in Mark chapter 1 verse 15 Mark 1 15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe in the gospel that word repent I want you to underline is very important because in Greek it means metanoia which is right about tone we all need to make a right about tone if we are really genuine in following Christ it cannot be business as usual and you could see this is a stumbling for many I mean this is a it's an area for all of us to pay attention to everyone that is in Christ Jesus must must make an eff effort to turn make a roundabout turn from the th from the ways they used to go before and turn around and follow Jesus if we don't make that hard choice which is painful but there is, is there are a lot of gains in it as well if you don't make that hard choice you can never experience new things in Christ Jesus so repentance is necessary if we are going to produce the right fruit of following Jesus because you know that you and I we have to continue to be fruitful we are like seed that is planted we must we must grow you know your relationship must grow your Christian life must grow you see it is this fruit that people see and they begin to come to you it's like light that attract people in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 Acts chapter 10 verse 38 and Jesus in his ministry how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him you know one of the function why he came was to destroy the works of the devil and you and I are supposed to follow in his footstep because anyone that is in Christ is us Christ is in him so when Christ is in us see we also take up the, the role of what Jesus did while he was walking the face of the earth we also go about doing good healing all that were oppressed by the devil because God is with us that name God was with him is a name because the scripture says I mean it's a reference to Jesus I say and God was with him that God was with him became the name of Jesus another name of Jesus which is called Emmanuel translated God with us we find that in Matthew 1 23 so all these names are very important that we, that that points us to Jesus they also point us to to, to the function the the, the, the the role that Jesus plays in the life of a believer in Matthew 4 23 Matthew 4 23 and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people so you can see the ministry of Jesus teaching preaching healing teaching preaching healing and that is the ministry that he has given you and I we are to teach about the kingdom we are to preach the gospel of the kingdom and we are to heal but in his name 
Jesus loved to be in the temple when he was with us. He loved to be in the temple. And that was what, why even King David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Anyone that is in Christ Jesus will love to be in the house of God. Jesus loved it. So he frowned at those who turned the house of prayer to, the house, to a house of merchandise. So he drove them out of the temple. We'll find that in John chapter 2. And in verse 18, So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things verse 19 Jesus answered and said to them destroy now take note of this uh, reference say destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up Jesus often speaks in figurative terms and in some places he speaks in parables to make uh, his discussion more robust. So he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it. So because he was in the temple, the Jews thought he was referring to the temple that was built in 46 years took them for the six years to build but he said destroy this temple and I will build it in three days and that got them mesmerized verse 21 to 22 but he was speaking he was speaking of the temple of his body therefore when he had risen next verse from the dead when he resurrected what uh, what an importance that is because tomorrow in the calendar of the church all over the world is Easter Sunday so when he resurrected when he had risen from the dead his disciples remembered that he had said this to them that destroyed this body and I will raise it in three days. And they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. His body equates to the temple from this expression. Is that not the same what Apostle Paul wrote when Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20 or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you for you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit his lifestyle was the grace God has given us to live by. So every time we read about him in the pages of the Bible, it is for us to learn from. As in the scripture told us, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning. Romans 15 verse 4. So as you study it, as you see it, you and I can make a study of his lifestyle. They were written for our learning. So the life of Jesus, the lifestyle of Jesus is actually what we should live by. Don't compare yourself with anybody but with Jesus. Measure up your life expectancy measure up your lifestyle measure up your life goals with that of 
Jesus. So Jesus is sufficient for us. Apostle Paul also wrote, Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. So Jesus is indeed sufficient for us. Don't go by what people do. Go by what Jesus did. And you can never fail. So when, when he rose from the dead, he presented himself by many infallible proofs for 40 days. Speaking of the things of the kingdom of God and commanded his disciples to wait for the promised Holy Spirit at that time and that's in Act chapter 1 but we now know that since then in Act chapter 2 the Holy Spirit has now been given to the world the Holy Spirit has been given to the church the Holy Spirit has been given to us in Matthew chapter 28, as I begin to round up, when Jesus rose from the dead and showed himself by many infallible proofs, you know, he, he, his disciples he told them what to do. So we have learned about who Jesus is, why he came. Now let's look at what is the impact of what we have learned? How can we respond to it? How can we run with it? What, did, what does it mean to now be a follower of Christ? And this is where the most of the work God expects us to walk. In Matthew 28 verses 18 to 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them, the disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It's quite important, the, 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 the sphere of the influence of Jesus. It caught across the heavens and the earth. So Jesus rules both in heaven and on earth. That's why he told his disciples in Matthew 18, said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. God, those, these places are the sphere of his influence where he, he, he reigns. So, and that is quite encouraging to you and I, that whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of Jesus is authority in heaven and on earth. That's why you and I are to take up that button and call upon his name fearlessly. In verse 19 of that same Matthew 28 he said go therefore and make disciples of all the nation mark that word make disciples what is the process of making disciples say making disciples is a role that you and I are to come into you see you don't have to go to a Bible school before you can make disciples Neither do you need to go to a seminary before you can make disciples. You don't even have to go to school to make disciples for Jesus. You only need to be a follower of Jesus to make disciples for him. Say, so go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. To make disciples is to tell them the good news of the kingdom and that is not hard if you have been following Jesus it's the, 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 the kingdom of God 
is the kingdom that is that is uh, overwhelmed with good news. There can't be bad news in the kingdom of God. And that is why we call it gospel, good news. If perhaps they too will receive the good news. So not only must you make disciples by telling them, preaching to them the good news, say baptizing them. You think this is only the pastor that baptized or the bishop? You too can baptize believers but in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. What baptisms are we talking about? The baptism of water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Look at the next verse. Teaching them. Remember the three components of the ministry of Jesus? Teaching, preaching, healing. It says teaching them. Because if you preach, if you teach the word of God and you preach about the kingdom and you meet someone that is sick, you also heal them. You pray for them to be healed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you cannot leave them as you met them. You will leave them better, not bitter. So teaching them to observe all things I have commanded. Our lives begins to change through teaching. Our lives begin to change through teaching not preaching. It's as you teach that you know that I should not tell lies. And you give example to it. As you teach, then you say, oh, I should not steal. You know? And you give example to it. As you teach, you teach them to pray. You know? Then you begin to pray and your life begins to get better. You teach. You teach them to study the Bible. You know? To pay attention to the word of God, so that they don't they, they don't forget it. That comes through teaching, not preaching. See, preaching brings people. Teaching makes them stay. See, and make them to grow in the Lord. So these are, in summary, what this. Holy Week has brought us what we ought to know about our Lord Jesus Christ. If you know these things and they are bound in you, it will make your life fruitful. So in summary, the life of Jesus Christ is sufficient for us his lifestyle as written on the pages of the Bible were written for us as examples to follow in his step. And as we follow this example in his steps, our lives will not remain the same. Our lives will get better through teaching of uh, scriptures. Jesus is the grace of God that is given to humanity. He said, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly loss so that we'll be able to live soberly, godly, and righteous in this world. So, if you find yourself in uh, living godly when majority around you are godless you find yourself living righteously when majority around you are unrighteous that is the grace of God the grace of God is given to us to teach us how to live in this present age to reign in life as he reigned, Jesus reigned, 
and to live by his examples as power to change lives you know, and to change the lives of others. So he told his disciples when he rose from the dead while he was with them before his final departure until he comes back again to take his church back. He said in Mark 16, he says, verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. The name of Jesus has been given to us as the key for answers to prayers. And that is why mountains will move at his name. Mountains will move when you call the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus. So there is no other name that has been given among men by which will be saved. Salvation comes through his name. Signs and wonders come through his name. It says there, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Demons need to be cast out. That is, drive them out. But they only respond at the name of Jesus. They will speak with new tongues. See, that's another sign that follow the name of Jesus. You hear people being... Uh, uh, receiving the gift of new tongues it comes by the name of jesus verse 18 they will take up serpents that's the resemblance of evil or works of the devil see they will take up things that are offered to idols you know they will take up those things that make people to be afraid you will say in the name of Jesus, let the power of that thing be destroyed. It says, they will take up serpents, see, it will not hurt them. And if they drink anything deadly, if by accident they take something that is, that is uh, dangerous to their health, it says, it will by no means hurt them, see, in his name. They will lay hands on the sick. It can be yourself. Lay hands on yourself if you have headache or you have tummy ache or you have anything, fever, or somebody else you know. They will lay hands on the sick. Remember, the power of healing will flow through you to that person that is sick in the name of Jesus. It's still done today. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is the, the benefits that we get from the name of Jesus and from our relationship with him. And this relationship goes beyond just casually coming to church. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that continuously check him or herself whether he is still in the faith. And the one that has done something that is displeasing to God, the Holy Spirit quickly comes and minister to you and said, no, you shouldn't do this. And you know his voice and you stop it. You know. Lastly, we also get through Jesus. We know through Jesus that Jesus said, I will never leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter. Maybe we'll look into this at another time. But then you know we are not alone. Now that physically Jesus Christ, you see, is not here on earth. He has left his body here, spiritual body, that is the church. See, but he has sent his, uh, the Holy Spirit. Say, I will send you another comforter. And that word comforter, someone that gives comfort 
and that is in the person of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit has been given to the church when Jesus Christ left the earth so that the church is not without God. So the Holy Spirit is inside each and every believer that has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in their lives. And how does that how does that come to be? It is simple. By faith as you hear the word of God. See, with the heart man believe unto righteousness. As you are hearing it, things begin to get right in your heart. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10, 9 to 13. Say, so anyone that now calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You too can be saved if you have not yet known the Lord. It's not everyone that is in the church that can say they are saved. You know that. So, when you look at this uh, uh, lifestyle of Jesus, you can see that it cut across every one of us. So let us pray before we ask questions. Let us pray. If you are there and you have not yet known the Lord, you know him for a little, for a while, a little while, and then you stop following him. Or you have not even known him at all. See, let us come back to him. Let's use this holy week as an opportunity to make amends please talk to him you're a youth you're an adult you're a nun you're a granddad you're a boy you're a girl it doesn't matter you're a minister you might even be a minister why don't you ask him to be your lord and savior but remember, Jesus Christ began his ministry through what? Repentance. He preached repentance. That you need to repent so that you can believe the gospel. Maybe God is calling you to make a roundabout turn. You've been drawing back. But he said, no, you cannot go forward when you are drawing back. If you want to go forward, you need to begin to go forward. Why don't you ask him, Lord, I'm sorry. I've been going back, back and forth, back and forth. My mind has not been totally in your word. Forgive me. Give me another chance. I want to be saved. Once you are saved, you know that you are saved. Once the Holy Spirit is in you, you know is in you. Once you have the fear of God, you know is in you. The fear of God stops us from sinning against God. Now ask Him to save you. And ask Him to give you the grace. That grace of God teaches us how to live in this world. Ask him to reveal that grace to you. For grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. It's through Christ that you can enjoy the riches of God. And the examples of his life will make your life powerful and produce powerful results in the lives of others. Ask him to write your name in the book of life. And thank him for it. Thank him for it. He himself will give you his Holy Spirit as you follow him. You may ask, ask him for his Holy Spirit right now. Ask him because with the Holy Spirit you will enjoy the presence of God. Lord will bless you. Thank you, Lord. 
in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.